Hey guys, it's me, Kevin, and the footy is almost back. Well, sort of. The AFLW is almost back, which starts this Friday between St Kilda and Richmond, which will kick off the 2022 AFLW season. Today in this video, I will predict what the ladder will look like after the 10-round competition at the end of the season and predict who is going to win the title. In 14th spot, I've got, just like last year, the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, let's face it, last year was a complete disaster for the Suns, and unfortunately, I haven't really seen him improve much since. In fact, I've probably only seen him get a little worse. Uh, they lose the Levi sisters, uh, Sam Virgo has retired, and to make things worse, their number one draftee, Charlie Rawbottom, couldn't train with them until, like, well, just before the season started, and the number one draft pick is generally quite important in AFLW, um, put that with the entire Suns spending the last two weeks in isolation. They've had a bad build-up to basically the start of the year, and I think the Suns are going to be lucky just to win a game. In 13th spot, I've got poor old St Kilda, who are facing a massive crisis. They lose by far their best player, Georgia Prepriakis, because she didn't want to take the vaccine. And then they lost their rising star, Tyana Smith, because she ruptured her ACL. So that's two of their best players they've lost for the entire season. And it's already a developing squad, St Kilda. And without their two key players, I can see them crashing very low in 2022. In 12th spot, I've got Geelong. Uh, they'll probably improve a little bit. Chloe Shear does come from Adelaide to help their forward line. They do lose Olivia Purcell, which is a big out, but she didn't play for most of last year. So I see Geelong is slightly improving from their one win 2021 season. I think with Nina Morrison coming back from her injury problems, they should be a bit more competitive, but I can't really see Geelong doing a lot this year either. Number 11, I've got a shock slide here, but I reckon Colton is going to absolutely blow it this year. It seems like the board problems at Colton have gotten to the AFL Zobby. They lose in a shocking off-season. Taylor Harris, Katie Loins, Jess Hosking, Alison Downey, and um, Dal Chloe Dalton. That's five, like, regulars from the Blues outfit out of the side. And who do they get? Some random GWS player I've never even heard of. So, yeah, their list is, I feel, quite inexperienced now. Uh, there's a few good players like Vessio and O'Day still there. But I think without those players and with a very poor forward line, I think Colton's going to slide badly. In 10th spot, I've got Richmond. I think they'll be indifferent to last year. Uh, they've got some decent players there. Brennan, uh, McKenzie, uh, Bernardi, Conti. And they do get Hosking and Poppy Kelly as well, uh, which is decent as well. Uh, I think they'll improve. They'll win a few games, but at the same time, they... Uh, Kind of won't push for finals either. In ninth spot, which I should have put Richmond there for jokes, but I've got the Rapid Risers, the West Coast Eagles. I reckon, look, they get Gooch and Smith from the Dockers and Giants, and uh, they get a bucket load of players back from season-long injuries last year, headlined by Dana Hooker. They were still quite competitive without those players, and I think with those players, they should get a few more wins on the board. And also watch out for Charlie Thomas. I reckon she... Uh, uh, is going to be um, a rising star, and she's actually someone that used to go to my school as well. So, uh, yeah. In eighth spot, I've got GWS. Uh, they were pretty average last year. I reckon they'll improve a bit this year, given that they had some experience to their list in uh, Loins and Dalton and Grierson. They lose a couple other players as well for the season, but I reckon uh, they'll be, yeah, again, they'll, d they'll be good against the bottom teams. They should take account of them easily. Uh, their form against the top teams will, however, cost them, and I reckon they'll finish mid-table. And for similar reasons, I'm putting the Bulldogs in seventh. They are clearly the best out of the non-Big Six teams, and in fact, last year were the only team to have beaten a team in the Big Six. Um, and I reckon the Bulldogs will pull off another upset against the Big Six team this year, uh, but I don't think it'll be enough for them to make finals. I just feel they're a little bit raw and still a bit young, but I reckon they'll take account like the Giants very easily against the teams below them. In sixth spot, look, I don't know what to make of this team, but Frio just don't seem to be doing anything to do well right now. I mean, they even lost to the Eagles in a practice game, which I know they shouldn't be taken seriously, but still, they were very slow in uh, opening quarters last year, and 
I don't know, that something doesn't seem to be going right in Frio. There's no reason. They've got a very good team with, like, Bowers, uh, O'Sullivan, um, Hooten, uh, the list goes on. But I just feel like this team doesn't have the edge uh, to push for a high-end finals position. I reckon we'll bow out again in the elimination final. Look, I know they won the Premiership last year, but in fifth spot, I've got Brisbane. That's mainly because of the retirements of Emma Zielk, their captain, as well as Lauren Arnell, so that's a fair bit of experience lost for the Lions. Look, they're still a good team, and I mean, they won the Premiership for a reason last year, but I'm just a bit scared they're, um, they're not going to have as good of an injury run as they did last year. They were very stable last year, and if injuries uh, catch up to them, they might just see a bit of a fall. I'm not showing much love to last year's grand finalists, am I? Because I'm putting Adelaide in fourth spot, and that's because of the loss of Andrew Foley and Rhiannon Metcalf um, for the season. Uh, Foley's injured, I don't know what's happening to Metcalf, but essentially Adelaide do lose a bit of experience and they tend to have that sort of uh, grand final uh, hangover every time they make a grand final. Um, I don't think they'll drop out of the finals this year. I think they'll still make finals. I still think they're going to be good enough to challenge and uh, make it to the prelim, but I do think that the Crows are not as good as the three teams I am about to mention. In third spot, I've got Collingwood. Look, I think they're primed to push uh, for a grand final appearance. Um, at the end of the day, they got, well, Alison Downey from Carlton. But more importantly, Sabrina Frederick from Richmond. And she's got two years of grand final experience under her belt. So, yeah, I reckon Collingwood definitely will be pushing uh, for a premiership. Uh, I just looked at their practice game against Melbourne. I just questioning if they can match it up to them and the kangaroos but i think overall they're gonna be a hard team to beat in second spot i've got north melbourne look i don't know what the heck happened last year but i'm looking at their list and with players like ashmore Gar garner kearney king and a bunch of other star players on that list there's no reason they shouldn't finish top two their practice match they held the bulldogs who i think would be pretty good this year just eight points they thrashed them 58 8 and I just, I can see North Melbourne bouncing back from what was a pretty disastrous year last year for their standards and um, booking in a top two spot. And in first spot, I've got Melbourne. Already boasting one of the best midfields with Paxman and Daisy. They had, ta they had Olivia Purcell as well as Taylor Harris in their forward line. Wait, no, 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 actually, they're going to finish seventh. They're cheating. They're breaching the salary cap. No, but seriously, they've recruited Purcell, they've recruited Harris. It is already a strong team, and to be honest, they're the best team of the second half of last year. They would have won the Premiership if they hadn't shown up a month late to the competition. And I think Melbourne are going to absolutely dominate this year's AFLW competition. So, what I think will happen in the AFLW finals? Well, I think all the home teams will win, so basically Melbourne win the Premiership. Uh, and they will beat North Melbourne at the MCG on grand final day. That is my prediction. And those are my AFLW ladder predictions for 2022. I hope you like this video. Please like, please subscribe. Comment what you thought of my video down below. Comment uh, how accurate do you think my predictions are and what your predictions are. And uh, check out some of my other videos. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.